I'd just settled into the couch with my snacks and my movie when suddenly the doorbell rang. <gasps> Flippity flippin' flamingo. Can't a woman have a moment of peace in her own house? Why is someone here at midnight? I was marching towards the door when I stopped short. Ow. Why is someone here at midnight? Uh, hello? Who is it? There was only silence. Are you a robber? Dude, I just took my kids to the dentist today, so I'm broke. Try your luck with the big house down the street. Again, no reply, but I could see a weird shadow against the door. Are you an alien who's accidentally landed on planet Earth? Run away while you still can. It's too late for the rest of us. Still, no answer, but I heard a muffled laugh. Look, I've been having a rough time lately, and I am so not in the mood for this. So I'm warning you, I'm coming out with an axe and I am not afraid to use it. I flung the door open and jumped back, half expecting to be attacked. But when the porch light fell on the face under the weird hat, I recognized someone I thought I'd never see again. Milo? Not a phone call or text for 12 years and now you just show up at my door at midnight? Did someone die? Uh, hi, long time no see. Yeah, here's the thing, Jen. Thousands of people across the globe will die soon if you and I don't travel back in time and fix a tiny mistake you made in high school. Can I come in? I was hoping this was the part I'd wake up and realize it was just a stupid dream that made no sense. Yeah, no such luck. Hi, I'm Jennifer, the oldest MC of My Story Animated. By the way, Mr. Director, I don't appreciate how everyone on set has been telling me I look very good for my age. That's something you'd say to someone in their 60s. I'm just a hot 35-year-old. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm catching something from one of my kids. Ah, uh, nasty buggers. Anyway, I'm old enough to be your mom, so y'all better show some respect and strap in for my story, because it's gonna be da bomb. Okay, no one says that anymore? Whatever. Now, before I continue, please like and subscribe to MSA. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of my past. It's kind of important. I was born on December 27, 1983, a cute lump of fat weighing 10 pounds, 8 ounces. I was an only kid, so my childhood was carefully documented by my adoring parents. Cute, cute, still cute, then yikes! Puberty hit, and that was just ugly, ugly, hella ugly. I had it all. The braces, the unibrow, the baby fat still holding on tight. I didn't think I'd recover from that phase. So I worked hard on being smart and funny. Then boom! I turned 16 and had a big crush on a boy. Lost the weight, lost the braces, and people started using a word for me that I hadn't heard before. Pretty. I was class valedictorian, voted most likely to succeed, and the girlfriend of the football team captain. Alex was an absolute dreamboat. You just had to see him in action once and you knew this guy was gonna be a star. We dated all through university and got married after graduation. Alex's career was on the rise, I was about to start my PhD, life was peachy, blah blah blah. But then one day, Alex had a terrible injury during a game. And soon after, the doctors told him he could never play professionally again. It was a huge blow, and with a kid on the way, I had to quit my PhD program and get a job as a high school science teacher. Alex was depressed and bedridden for months, but when he got back on his feet, he was even worse. Babe, I've got an amazing idea. We're opening a ramen place. We don't know the first thing about making ramen. I'm one-eighth Japanese. It's gotta be in my blood. It wasn't. We filed for bankruptcy six months later. I bought a flock of sheep, babe. It's a great investment. We'll double our money in six months. We didn't. Unless we're talking about losses. Yeah, we doubled those. I'm growing mushrooms in the garage. I'm growing avocados in the garden. I'm investing in a video game for bored 70-year-olds. I tried to be supportive, knowing that he'd lost his big dream career. But the debts were piling, the fights were becoming more frequent, and we were drifting further apart. Ten years later, we decided to separate and see how we felt about it. But the one true joy of my life was becoming a mom to my daughter Stella, followed five years later by her twin brothers, David and Beckham. No matter what happened, this love I had for my kids was forever. So were sleepless nights, piles of laundry, cleaning, doctor visits, viruses, diapers, more piles of laundry, cleaning, homework, tantrums, crying, more crying, falling like a baby in the bathroom. Yeah, okay, the last one is me. Why are you telling me this morning that you need cupcakes for your entire class today? I put it on the fridge schedule a month ago, left sticky notes all over the house a week ago, and set a reminder on your watch for yesterday. Your brother stuck my watch in a jar of Nutella. 
David, Beckham, why do you keep taking your clothes off? That's the opposite of getting dressed. I'll be the only kid who didn't get anything for the class picnic. No, sweetie, wait. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, here's a jar of peanut butter and some cookies. Ew, no, those are stale. You want to take some prunes? They're great for constipation. Mom, I'll tell the teacher you forgot. It happens. Oh, no, you won't. I know how judgy those teachers are. We're stopping at a bakery. Boys, I swear if you don't stop running this second, I'll call an elf who will call Santa and tell him not to get you any Christmas presents. You don't know an elf. Yeah, we don't believe you. I'm your mother, and mothers never lie to their children. Now get dressed before I call the goblin who eats twins for... Hey, lady, can you control your kids? One of them took my cookie. Oh, God, so sorry. I'll get you another one. A coffee, too. The other brat stuck his gross finger in it. Okay, sure. But you don't have to be so angry. They're just kids. Yeah, I'm angry at you. Clearly, you suck as a mom and didn't teach them any manners. <laughs> Excuse me? You want to say that again to my face? Uh, did you think I said it to your butt the first time? <laughs> oh, you want a piece of me, buddy? Mom, please don't. You're crazy. I'm out of here. I need to pee. I need to pee, too. For the last time, you don't need to take your shoes off to pee. After we returned from the bathroom, I turned to the lady at the counter. <sighs> How many cupcakes do you have here? Two dozen. I'll take them all, please. I can't sell them all to you. Why not? What if someone else comes around for a cupcake? What do you care if one person buys them or ten people do? You just want sales, right? No, I want to make people happy. Then go be a party clown in your free time. But right now, I need you to sell me those cupcakes. I'll pay you ten extra dollars. No! Gimme it! I jumped behind the counter and started taking out the cupcakes. The lady started wrestling with me and screaming for security. I pushed her, she pushed me back, and I went flying straight into a baker walking out of the kitchen with someone's wedding cake. I'll never forget that moment. Me covered head to toe in white frosting, the salesperson still screaming, everyone in the cafe, including my children, looking absolutely terrified, and in the doorway stood Alex, looking as handsome as ever holding hands with a leggy redhead who looked like she'd stepped out of a magazine. Mom, are you okay? Yes, sweetie. I'm fine. I'm not fine. I feel like I'm one of those hamsters on a wheel, and the wheel never stops, and I'm running and running, but somehow I've gained weight. How did that happen? You had three kids, honey, and you're an amazing mom. No, I'm not. The twins are adorable, but they're maniacs. And Stella is so smart, and I'm constantly disappointing her. She knew Alex was dating someone for months, and she didn't tell me to protect my feelings. A ten-year-old shouldn't have to do that. How do you feel about Alex having a girlfriend? I know the marriage has long been over, but I just wasn't expecting him to get over it so quickly, you know? I know. So, yeah, we got a divorce with shared custody of the kids. I became kind of friends with... Cassie or Katie or whatever that dumb redhead's name is, and life went on. Now it was Alex's turn to keep the kids overnight, and I had big plans for myself, which were rudely interrupted. You have white hair now. You have a bigger butt now. You checked out my butt? Don't sound so excited. I just made a logical guess. <sighs> Milo, you want to tell me where you've been for 12 years? You just suddenly left town without so much as a goodbye? Oh, wait, what day was that? Yeah, my wedding day. And you were the best man. I told you I had a brainwave related to my research. Also, you know I hate people and weddings and happiness in general. You left me a text, and I haven't heard from you since. Why come and see me now? Because we have to travel back. Okay, sit down and I'll set up a PowerPoint presentation. Use your words and make them make sense. Okay, okay. So, do you remember what we were doing on the night of 15th December, 2000? Sometimes I'm in the shower and can't remember if I just shampooed my hair, so no. Do you remember that you were a nosy person and you suspected something shady was happening in the abandoned warehouse in our town and you dragged me there one night to find out more? Oh yeah, I remember that. Shh. And I was right. It was some super freaky science lab. But then we went back a week later and it was gone. Yeah. Have you heard about the Xenovirox virus? I recently read about some cases in the news. Soon it'll be a lot more, all over the world. 
Apparently, the virus was created in that shady science lab by some people in government as biological warfare. What? No way! Do you remember that when we were in the lab, you accidentally bumped into some things on a countertop? Did I? You knocked over a vial, and the liquid in it got mixed with fluid in another beaker. That was the vaccine. Because of your mishap, the scientist working on it got the wrong result, and he concluded that the vaccine was impossible to make. The project was shut down because it was too risky having a virus from which no one could be protected. So it looks like I did a good thing? You'd think so. But there's no way to really destroy a virus. It was kept in a secure facility all these years. And I don't know how and when exactly, but it escaped. And it's spreading like wildfire now. And because of your accident, the vaccine for it was never made. Oh my god. Well, someone will make it now, won't they? Not fast enough. Jen, it's really serious and we gotta go back and fix this. What do you mean, go back? Didn't I already mention the time travel thing? Yeah, so I stumbled upon a rip in the space-time continuum, which helped me to discover the way to open portals whenever I want and travel to the past. That's what I've been working on for almost two decades now. Oh, no, no, no. Jennifer, please wake up from this terrible dream. Is it that bad meeting me after all this time? Yes, because not a single thing you've said has been good or made sense. How do you even know all this about the vaccine and the virus? Time travel. I just told you. You used to be a lot smarter, Jen. You actually expect me to believe you're a time traveler? If there's anyone who'll believe me, I expect it to be you. I looked into his sharp blue eyes and knew he wasn't kidding. Okay, okay. If you've traveled back in time, why didn't you just fix the problem yourself? Believe me, I tried. But I can't seem to do it alone and I can't ask anyone else. Come on, we gotta go now. I have this night to myself, Milo, and I don't want to be some hero and save the world. I just want to watch a movie and fall asleep five minutes after it starts and have pancakes in the morning. And no, I won't have to make three dozen pancakes or eat the cold ones. Fresh, hot pancakes just for me and coffee and peace. Let me have this, please. Jen, everyone you love is at great risk. Do it for your kids. No, that's just emotional blackmail. Is it working? Yeah, fine, it's working. <sighs> Let's go, you weirdo. You're gonna go like this? Yeah, what's wrong with this? Oh, nothing. You look lovely. Is that mustard or barf on your coat? Shut up. Put this hat on, please. Yay, I get a funky hat too. Next, Milo took out a cube, placed it on the ground, and it sprang up into a tent. Hey, I need one of those collapsible things for camping with the kids. That's the astral tent. It's my time machine. Now, I just need a minute to set up the temporal destination. I'd followed Milo here, curious to know what he was going on about. But it just hit me then. Milo was actually mental. He'd really lost it. Oh, you poor baby. Uh, what's going on? Nothing, sweetie. It's all okay. I'm here for you, but you need help. Professional help. Do you understand what I'm saying, Milo? No. Can you get your hands off my face? I hear there's really nice places now for people like you, and you'll get the help you need, and I'll come visit you, I promise. Are you talking about a mental institution? I'm not crazy. Of course not, sweetie. You're special. Cut it out. If you think I'm crazy, why did you come with me? I don't know, Milo. Maybe I just came along because I'm actually really happy to see you, even though I've been pretending otherwise. And maybe a small part of me thought, hey, he's a genius. Maybe he really did invent time travel and you're in for an adventure, Jen, which would be a nice change from your mundane life. But you just pitched up a tent in a field and gave me a stupid hat. And this is all so ridiculous. I'm going home. Just as I turned to leave, I heard a buzzing sound from behind me and I gasped. The tent was glowing. It makes that sound when it's warming up. You want to put that hat back on? Okay, then. As we stood outside the tent, I could feel my heart racing with excitement. Was this really happening? Before we go in, you gotta remember three rules of time travel. Number one, and the most important, don't change anything in the past. We have no idea what happens when we pull out a single thread in the fabric of time. It can have a butterfly effect and change many outcomes, possibly for the worse. Aren't we going back to change something? We already know that has a really bad outcome, so we're gonna risk it. Change nothing else, okay? Got it. Number two, 
you can't get recognized by anyone. Tell no one who you are under any circumstances. Done. Number three. Uh, okay, I think I don't have a number three. So just two important rules of time travel. Also, I gotta warn you, as we travel, you will experience nausea, headaches, dizziness, stomach cramps, palpitations, sweats, and feel like someone kicked you in the back. Sounds like nine months of pregnancy. Been there, done that. Okay then, you ready? This is insane. Yes, yes, okay, I'm ready. It's good to see you too. Now, one, two, three, go. Oh my god, my god, that was amazing! I feel so alive! Woohoo! I'm gonna barf! I followed Milo out of the tent, and my heart caught in my throat. I knew this place. It was the football field in our high school. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Uh-oh. Uh, I think I kind of made a small mistake. How big is small when we're talking about time travel? I just got us here a little earlier than planned. But don't worry, you'll be back at your house the same night I visited you. We just got a couple of extra days here. As long as I get back on time. Uh, where's my cell phone? Jen, the iPhone wasn't released till 2007. It doesn't exist right now. Welcome to the winter of 2000. Man, this is so freaky and so dope. You must be so impressed with yourself. Who wouldn't be? Milo said we'd be staying at his place where no one would notice us. And I knew why, of course. He'd been adopted as a kid by an eccentric businessman who loved him dearly, but was away on business a lot, and growing up, Milo was often home alone in a huge mansion. We climbed over the wall, walked across the garden, and slipped through a half-opened window. I still couldn't get over how weird it was to sneak through these familiar hallways. We slipped into a room in the unused wing of the mansion and settled in to sleep for the night. You still awake? Of course I'm still awake! I'm so excited to be here, Milo! I can't wait to go around town, visit our school, see my parents. You know what this means, right? My mom is still around. Jen, you can't be out and about. I just want to see. Can you imagine how freaked out your parents would be if they saw and recognized the older you or if you bumped into your younger self? We don't know what your past self would do if she saw her future self, and it could have serious consequences for your present. We have to stay low, do what we came to do, and go home. You got it? Yeah. Of course. Of course I wasn't staying in. Pfft, I'd be careful. But how many times does one get to travel back to their freaking past? So the next morning, I woke up early, locked Milo in the room so he wouldn't follow me too soon, and sneaked out of the house. I knew my parents would have left for work by now, so I'd see them later. That meant I was going to visit the most important place in my teenage life, high school. No one even asked me who I was as I entered the premises and it looked like I'd walked onto the set of Mean Girls. The really low-rise jeans, fitted crop tops, butterfly clips, tattoo chokers, and everything with sequins looked like crimes against fashion to me now. I walked out into the main courtyard, and my heart skipped a beat as I caught sight of a young Milo on a bench, lost in a book on quantum physics. I'd always thought he was cute in his careless, genius way, and he had a bit of a fan following. Hey Milo, I was wondering if you could help me with my math assignment. I could, but I won't. Okay, who cares about stupid math anyway? I just came to ask if you'd go to the spring dance with me. Is it spring already? I hadn't noticed. So, is that a yes or no? A yes or no to what? The dance, Milo. Oh yeah, that. Nope, not a hard pass. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Why not? Am I that unattractive? To me, yes. Objectively speaking, you're an above-average specimen of the female species. Come on, stop pining for Jennifer and just say yes. Are you sure you know the meaning of pining? Can you even spell it? I don't understand quantity science, but I know when a guy wants a girl. But she's with Golden Boy now, so you should move on. With me. The only thing I'm pining for is peace. So fine, give me that math assignment. Jeez, were you raised by wolves with underdeveloped brains? It's all wrong, literally all of it. I'll solve it in my lunch break and you leave me alone. Deal? 
As Milo walked away without waiting for an answer, I saw a troubled look cross his face. I'd sometimes thought Milo and I had a spark, but he'd never said anything, and I always assumed he didn't want to be more than friends. I made my way to the football field next, knowing exactly what to expect. Alex bunking his classes to practice football. But as I got closer, it nearly took my breath away seeing him playing and looking so vibrant, and my heart broke a little knowing how that dream had ended. Hey lady, who are you? And why are you staring at that boy? Hey, it's not a crime to stare at your husband. And I, uh, by that I mean the coach. Beautiful man, can't keep my eyes off him. Coach Jackson is your husband? I didn't know he was married. Husband-to-be. Hopefully, if I can put a ring on it. <laughs> okay, I gotta pee. Be right back. I ran off in the direction where I remembered the bathrooms were, and decided to wait it out in case the janitor was still outside. But as I was wandering through the hallway, I suddenly saw Alex walk in with his ex-girlfriend, Bianca. Oh god, I couldn't risk being seen by them. I slipped through the first door close to me, and realized it was the boys' locker room. I heard footsteps coming closer, so I jumped into an empty closet seconds before Alex and Bianca came in. And then, they started kissing. What the actual heck? Alex was cheating on me in high school? Bianca, we can't keep seeing each other. I have a girlfriend I really like. So, I have a boyfriend I really like too. Why can't we have some fun on the side? Yeah, we fought a lot when we were together, but we always had great chemistry. That witch! No, no, I can't. Look, this is too stressful and it's giving me an ulcer. And I need my head in the game before the big championship. We're not seeing each other again, okay? Okay, if you say so. Now give me one last. Alex, <gasps> are you in there? Can I come in? That was me. That was my 17-year-old voice. Oh my god, it's Jen. Uh, hey, yeah, uh, I'm changing. Give me a minute. <gasps> a minute? What'll happen in a minute? Are you gonna do some magic trick to make me invisible? And suddenly, without warning, Alex shoved Bianca in the closet I was hiding in, and I barely managed to press myself to one side and hold my breath. You can come in, Jen! Seeing myself look so young and beautiful made me want to cry. I was a goddess. Hey, babe, <laughs> missed you in class again. You're gonna flunk chemistry at this rate. No one's gonna care when I'll be a rich, famous football player. And then he pulled me in for a kiss. How could he kiss me with that same stupid mouth he'd use to kiss stupid Bianca who I wanted to strangle? I just wanted to check if you wanted to go with me and Milo to this science exhibit at the museum after school. His dad got special passes. Gross. I'd rather be hit by a car. Seriously, it's by this really cool scientist who's worked on a quantum entanglement. You're not even listening anymore, are you? Of course I'm listening. You said blah blah something, blah blah blah. Why you're even friends with Milo, I'll never understand. He's my best friend, and he's really cool. He's a dork, <gasps> and he acts like I'm some dumb jock. You guys have fun, babe. I've got a thing with a friend anyway. As the two walked out hand in hand, I could see Bianca smirking. Yeah, the thing with a friend is a makeout session with me. <laughs> Stupid Jen. Gosh, you slimy little- ah! Bianca jumped out of the closet like she'd been electrocuted, staring at me in shock. I was so close to getting out unnoticed. Stupid, stupid me! Who are you, you pervert? How long have you been hiding here and spying on boys half your age? What? No, I can explain. Go ahead then. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I do have an explanation, and it's a really good one too. And suddenly, Bianca let out an earth-shattering scream. I shoved her back in the closet and ran for my life. Apparently, not fast enough for a teenager. Someone catch that woman! She was hiding in the boys' locker room! She attacked me! And before I knew it, I had half the school running after me as I was headed for the gates. I'd never be able to outrun these kids. And if I got recognized, I was done for. Milo would kill me. And then suddenly, I saw him approaching me fast on some old bicycle. Hop on, quick! Milo pedaled away furiously, but we still had people after us. Can you go a little faster? I'm trying, but you're kind of... I mean, I don't cycle professionally, you know? I'm kind of what, Milo? Well, a little chunkier than I remember. Did you just call me chunky? No, I said chunkier. There's a subtle difference. Stop distracting me! Milo swerved into some street, after which we ditched the bike, ran down several narrow alleyways, crossed a main road, and finally ran into a park where we collapsed behind a huge tree. I... you... 
What were you thinking? I'm sorry. I know I should have listened to you, but I just couldn't help myself. Thank you for coming in time. You're not welcome! Milo, it was so cool. I saw you and my younger self, and I was hot. I don't remember being that hot. Do you remember that? I really don't. Also, I caught Alex making out with his frickin' ex, Bianca. Can you imagine? Milo just stared at me quietly. Uh, why don't you look shocked? Wait, did you know back then? I had heard some rumors. And you never told me? Ow! I wasn't sure if they were true, okay? And it's not like you would have listened to me back then. I told you he was too stupid for you. A dimwit, a moron, a buffoon. But did you ever listen? No! You thought everyone was stupid. You wouldn't have taken me seriously no matter what I'd said, Jen. You had stars in your eyes for that guy. He was perfect. Apparently not. So what, our entire relationship was a lie? And Alex never really loved me? <sighs> I hate siding with Alex, but I don't think that's true. I think he did really love you, the best he knew how. I guess. If only I'd known, though, maybe my life would have been totally different. No use dwelling on the past, right? Now, listen, we have to stay inside, especially since we've got people looking for us. I just have one tiny favor to ask. No. Hear me out! No. Milo, I want to see my parents once, okay? Mom just left without a word. Two weeks from this date, actually. And I haven't seen her in 18 years. I won't interact with anyone, and I'll just see them through the window having dinner. It'll be nighttime, so no one will notice me. Fine. Just one look through the window, and I'm coming with you. And later that evening, as we crept up to my house, my heart almost exploded. There was Mom, as lovely as I remembered, and Dad laughing and looking like a completely different person from now. Milo had joined us for dinner, and we were picture perfect. I loved how you guys always made me feel like I was a part of the family. I still don't understand why she left us. Just like that, it broke Dad's heart. Well, it broke mine too. I felt Milo slip his fingers through mine, and we watched for a few more minutes before we left. How about we get pizza from our favorite spot and talk tonight? We've got a lot of catching up to do. Sounds like a plan. And God, I've missed Gianni's pizza. Best in the world. This is the worst pizza in the world. Why does the marinara sauce taste like wet socks? The pepperoni is like rubber. How come we didn't notice this before? I don't know, man. This is inedible, and I'm starving. Can we explore your kitchen, please? Your dad's a millionaire. Why do you only have eggs in the fridge? Because he wasn't around much and I wasn't interested. I don't mind you boiling some eggs. Why should I do it? It's your house. Or is it my job because I'm a woman? I didn't know we'd traveled back to 1950. Jeez, it's not a feminist issue. I'll boil them. Do you even know how to boil eggs? I'm a scientist. Of course I know. The stove turns on the other way, genius. God, men are such useless babies. Give me that. I'll do it. I can handle boiling an egg, woman. I don't have the energy to bicker like an old married couple. Just let me do it. As we both pulled at the saucepan, it went flying out of our hands and landed with a loud clunk on the floor. Milo immediately pulled me into the tiny pantry, and we waited with bated breath, expecting some servant to come running in. I think no one heard us. We can go out now. Let's give it a few more minutes. We can't risk getting caught. I felt acutely aware of how close Milo was, and how he seemed to be analyzing my face. You haven't changed much since high school, you know? Liar. Just earlier today, you said I'm chunkier. I just meant you're not a skinny teenager anymore. And you look great. I'm sure you get asked out all the time. Oh, no. I'm probably known as the lunatic mom of three kids in my town. I attacked a salesperson and destroyed a wedding cake at a bakery not too long ago. Oh, God. I wish I'd been there to see it. I don't like that crazy, angry side of me at all. And yeah, that would make anyone run away if they were interested in the first place, which I highly doubt. I doubt the opposite. Suddenly, Milo was even closer and tucking away hair behind my ear, and my arms were going around his neck, and I could feel his breath on my face. And just as I leaned in, the door <gasps> burst open, and we stared in complete horror at a younger Milo who was staring back at us. Don't move. Don't breathe. He's literally staring at us. 
I think he's sleepwalking. I used to do that. I'm not sleepwalking. Are you? Me? From the future? No. And that's... that's older Jen! This is just a dream, Milo. You'll wake up from it soon. Well, that's disappointing. For a minute, I got excited thinking you'd come from the future to tell me time travel is possible, and Jen and I ended up together. It's not. And we didn't. Oh, okay. Good to know. Can I grab those cookies? Thanks. And then, young Milo just walked away. Oh my god, what just happened? Do you have any memory of this encounter since you met your future self in your past? Uh, I, I hadn't thought about this in years. But yeah, now I remember having this weird vivid dream as a teenager about meeting our future selves. I thought that's all it was. A dream. This is insanely cool. Also, let me get this straight. 17-year-old you wanted us to end up together? Milo's face flushed. I thought you always knew I liked you, but deliberately ignored it. So I assumed you just wanted to be friends. I suspected it sometimes, but you never said or did anything. There was never a good time. We only saw each other every day. You had a crush on someone first, and then there was someone else, and then there was Alex. Alex was the first serious relationship. The rest were just crushes, Milo. I may have even lied about one of them to get some reaction out of you. Wait, wait, hold on, back up. So that means you liked me too? Maybe. Okay, yes. There were times when I thought we could be more than friends, but you were always so inexpressive and in your head. I never knew what you really wanted. So this is my fault? <laughs> Looks like it. Also, is this why you disappeared from my wedding? I really was making groundbreaking progress on my time travel work. I was totally consumed by it and didn't need any distractions. But yeah, I thought seeing you actually walk down the aisle with that dumb jock would be a bit hard. Maybe if you said something, it would have turned out differently. Things with Alex weren't always perfect, even when it looked like they were. But I guess this is how it was meant to be. You know what? I'm exhausted. I'm gonna call it a night. The next morning, we decided just to focus on what we had to do that night to make sure the scientists' vaccine experiment didn't get messed up. Can't we go to the lab earlier today and remove the equipment so I never bump into it? That place is guarded at all times. The only opportunity we have is what our younger selves have discovered all those years ago. There's a half hour gap between guards changing shifts at night. Which is also the time our younger selves will be breaking in and we can't be seen by them. Exactly. We can only follow them carefully and actually prevent the accident from happening at the time it happens. When you bump into the equipment, there's a three second window between the liquid falling from the file and going into the beaker. We have to be hiding behind that counter already so we can stop that. I've tried it a few times, but I can never do it fast enough. When you have three kids, you have superhuman reflexes. It'll be a piece of cake for me. It felt surreal as we hid in the bushes outside the warehouse, observing young Jen and Milo ahead of us and we waited for five minutes before we climbed through the window they used to get in. Milo, I'm stuck. Push the window up a bit more. It seems to be jammed. How are you stuck? I just came through this too. I guess my butt is just bigger than yours, isn't it? Just do something. <clears throat> Milo pulled hard at my arms and I finally got through and landed on him with a soft thud. We waited breathlessly for a few seconds to see if someone had heard us, then went down the passageways that led to the lab. We slipped in quietly behind young Milo and Jen, then crouched on the floor and crawled over behind the counter. What the heck is going on in this place? I don't know. Half of this stuff has biohazard signs on it. I really think we shouldn't have come here. I told you so. Shut up. It's going to happen in 10 seconds. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. We counted down the seconds, my heart pounding in my ears, and the second we heard young Jen crash into the equipment, I leapt up, reached for the beaker, and pulled it away just before the liquid from the vial fell into it. And I felt a strange ripple in the air, like something major had changed. Hey, are you okay? Look, we gotta get out of here before someone finds us. As the two ran out, Milo and I slowly got up, my hands still shaking as they were clutching onto the beaker. I... I actually did it! Oh my god, Jen. We've just averted a huge future catastrophe. Now, let's get out of here before we cause another one. We ran out the way we'd come, climbed out the window, 
and saw young Jen and Milo sneaking off ahead of us, we decided to take a breath and give them a head start. But just a few minutes later, several black cars came at full speed and halted in front of the warehouse. Milo and I quickly ducked behind a bush. And then I saw something which made my heart drop. As the car doors opened, several people in lab coats and black suits stepped out. And one of them was my mom. Without even realizing, I let out a loud cry and Milo clamped a hand over my mouth. Mom looked around sharply and for a second, I thought she was staring right at me. Did someone else hear that? No. What did you hear, ma'am? Just a strange sound. Maybe it was an animal. As she was about to walk into the building, she suddenly turned to a bodyguard. Search the premises to make sure we don't have any unwanted visitors. And if you find someone, you know what to do. As the men started spreading out, Milo quietly dragged me backwards towards the fence. He lifted a plank to let us through, and then we ran as fast as we could. Milo, stop, stop. I can't breathe. My mother, my mother, she's somehow a part of this horrible virus project? Did you, did you know she was involved? I swear I didn't. The last few times I went into the lab, I escaped before these cars got here. It's my first time seeing her too. This is ridiculous. My mom was known for the best freaking apple pies in this town. That's what she was known for. How can that cold, scary person be my mom? How could she be part of creating a weapon? I'm so sorry, Jen. Milo hugged me tight as I sobbed into his chest. I want to go home, to my present. Can we just go now? Yeah, I just need to get my briefcase from my house. Then we're going home. I was still in shock as we made it back to Milo's. He told me to wait in the garden while he got his briefcase. But moments later, I saw young Jen and Milo come out of the house and I immediately hid. I saw them walking down the driveway. But then suddenly, he took my arm. Jennifer, there's something I need to say to you. You never call me Jennifer. This sounds serious. It is, and it isn't. I mean, it is, but it's not that big a deal. Like, either way, I'm gonna be fine. Like, I'm cool. Y you get me? Are you having a stroke? No, no, I'm trying to say something here, okay? And I have to do it tonight or I'll lose courage and never say it. I didn't remember having this conversation with Milo before, and suddenly, I felt that weird ripple in the air that I'd felt in the lab, like something big was changing. You know you can say anything to me. I'm your best friend. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, that's the thing, actually. How long have we known each other now? Four years, I guess. So, in that time, the thing is, Jennifer, I have to confess that I... What the heck? I think I'm in... And suddenly, I desperately started making sounds like a crow. What is that? Sounds like a bird being murdered. It doesn't sound like a bird from this planet. The car is ready to drop Miss Jennifer home, sir. I gotta go. It's late. Let me know if you find that poor, tortured creature. Young Jen left in the car, and young Milo stood there looking after her, then went back to the house with his head hanging. And I was still reeling with shock when I heard Milo behind me. Hey, we're good to go. I turned around and pounced on him. What did you do? What? Why are you attacking me? What did you do? Ow! Get off of me and stop pulling my hair! What is the matter with you? You did something, Milo. I know you did. I don't remember you ever coming close to telling me that you were in love with me. So why did I just witness your younger version about to say that to my younger version? Oh, God, I didn't know he'd do it here and you'd see it. <laughs> me what you did! All right, all right. R remember how last night you were blaming me for never having the courage to say anything? And you have been saying you have a mundane life and you wish things could have been different? So, yesterday when you went to bed, I slipped into Milo's room. I used to write notes to myself as reminders all the time, so I left a note saying that I had to tell you how I felt tonight. I just tried giving my younger self a little push, that's all. That's all? Are you kidding me? You tried to change a major event, Milo. After all the rules of time travel and your lectures not to change a thing, you actually tried to change our destiny? I thought that's what you wanted. That's not what I want now. You should have said something in the past. That's exactly what I was doing. Why are women so confusing? No, if your past self had just told my past self how you felt, and if after that, I decided to break up with Alex 
it would have changed the rest of my timeline forever. So when I return to my present, it wouldn't even be the same present. Would that be so bad? I thought we missed our chance and I could fix it. And it's not like things with Alex turn out great. I have kids with Alex, and they are the best thing that ever happened to me. If Alex and I never ended up together, I would never have my kids. You almost erased them from existence. Okay, listen, I know that sounds bad, but if the timeline changed, you would have no memory of your kids in your present. You wouldn't even have ever met them. It would all be different. And that very thought is making me sick to the stomach. In this moment, I know they exist and they mean everything to me. And I would choose the same life over and over again just because I got to have them. And you nearly destroyed all of that. And I will never, ever forgive you for this. Take me back home now. Jen, I'm sorry. I didn't think it through. Don't talk to me. I can't even look at you. When we made it back to the present, Milo just said, I'm sorry. And disappeared into the night. And my heart felt heavy with anger and knowing I'd probably never see him again. I hugged my kids extra tight when I met them. And over the next few days, we all watched news of the Xenovirus virus spreading like wildfire. But the government reassured the public that a vaccine would be made available as soon as the following week, and I breathed a sigh of relief knowing we'd all be safe. And soon after, I took a trip to see my dad. He had become a recluse over the years, and I'd kind of resented him because I always felt he knew the truth about why Mom left and kept it from me. Dad, don't ask me how, but I know Mom was involved in a shady government project related to the Xenovirix virus. I deserve some answers. So if you know more about it, please just tell me now. And finally, he did. I knew your mother was a government official, but her work was always confidential. The night she left us, she told me that she was part of an illegal project involving the creation of a virus as biological warfare, which had been shut down and everyone involved in it was considered a criminal. So she had to go on the run and leave the country immediately. I was just trying to protect you. I didn't want you to think she was a monster. Honestly, I haven't heard a word from her since. I'm really sorry you had to carry that burden alone. I wish you'd told me. No, I wish I had too. And we wouldn't have drifted apart. We can still fix that, Dad. The truth about Mom was a bitter pill to swallow. But it was better to have some closure. And I got close to Dad again. I even felt more at peace with my decision to divorce Alex. Well... Sort of. You know, Alex, I really am sorry that you didn't get to live your football dream. I know it meant everything to you. Uh, wow. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was really hard. Ow! Why did you just kick me? That's for cheating on me. Don't even deny it. I know you did. What? When? Think long and hard, Alex. It'll come back to you. And try to be a better man now. And seeing my younger self just made me think about the dreams I once had. I decided to apply for PhD programs again. And yeah, it was hard studying while juggling the mom gig, but I was happier than I'd been in years. My anger at Milo faded as months passed by, and I wanted to talk, but I had no way to track him down. But then, as fate would have it, I was running after a bus one day when I bumped straight into him. Literally bumped into him. Ow! Oh, please don't punch me! I'm already hurting! What, is your skull made of iron? It's not like I bumped into a feather pillow, and you made me miss my bus. I don't think you were going to catch that anyway. Any chance we can get coffee and talk? Sure, but not this cafe. I'm banned from here. Look, just let me say my piece first, okay? What I did was beyond stupid. It was so reckless even trying to alter our timelines, and no one knows that better than me. There wasn't even any guarantee that you'd have broken up with Alex and ended up with me, or that we would have lasted in a relationship. Maybe I would have never continued working on time travel, and then we'd have never gone back to fix the vaccine. I... I can't even fathom the repercussions of such an action. I guess I was just really curious about the what if. But I'm so glad you stopped it in time. I know it's a lot to ask for, but is there any chance we can agree that I was a complete moron and you can forgive me one day? I'm curious about the what ifs too. And I did sound like I wanted a different life, but I've realized that maybe everything that happened, however it happened, 
had the best possible outcomes for all of us. I want to believe that. And I guess we were supposed to meet again now after all these years. So why don't we just pick it up from here? Hi, I'm Milo, a whack job scientist and time traveler. I'm emotionally stunted, but I'm working on it. Hello, I'm Jen, mom of three, science teacher and PhD student, also taking therapy for anger management. Cool. I just really want to know one more thing. What's that? What are you doing for the rest of your life? <gasps>